Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about extensive form games under incomplete information. Um, I would like to start with an example. So this is a standard Steckelberg competition. So there are two firms, Firm 1 and Firm 2. Uh, firm 1 moves first and then Firm 2 uh, observes Firm 1's uh, quantity choice and then Firm 2 chooses its own quantity. But I'm going to simplify the game because uh, if we assume infinitely many uh, strategies for each player, uh, the game tree is going to be complicated. And in fact, I would like to draw the game tree of this game. And so I'm going to simplify it and assume that uh, firm one and firm two can only choose two levels of quantity. All right, well, the thing is, uh, before sort of uh, mentioning about the quantity choices of these firms, uh, f what is the incomplete information here? Well, I suppose that firm one's uh, marginal cost is unknown to firm two. Um, so firm two believes that firm one's marginal cost is the either low, for example, marginal cost is equal to zero, or high, for example, marginal cost is equal to, I don't know, 10. All right. However, firm two's marginal cost is a, a public information. All right. It's commonly known. All right. Well, so what does that mean? That means there is an incomplete information uh, from one's marginal cost. Therefore, its payoff function is unknown uh, to player two. However, this is one-sided asymmetric information because from two's uh, payoff function, marginal cost, is perfectly known by all the players. All right, so the timing of the game. Firm one picks its quantity first. Uh, its quantity is either 4 or 8. All right, so for simplicity, there are two levels firm 1 can pick. After observing firm 1's quantity choice, firm 2 selects its own quantity, again, either 4 units or 8 units. So, and then the payoffs. I'm not going to write down the payoffs, but what is the um, uh, game tree for this game and how do we analyze it? All right, so first off, remember we have two potential types for firm one. It's either low cost firm one or high cost firm one. Right? Uh, you can name the uh, types as you wish, but you know, low cost, high cost is sort of a standard given the story of the uh, question. So how am I going to sort of incorporate all this into my game tree? Well, how does this types occur. I mean, are these choice that belong to player one or firm one or firm two? No, they're not. I mean, the firm one cannot choose its own type. All right, so that's, that's an important assumption. Well, then what determines or who determines the type of the players? Well, no one really. I mean, uh, or even if a sort of the CEO of firm one has determined the marginal cost of this firm, well, we do not want to incorporate this choice decision into our strategic environment, all right? So we would like to ignore that choice. I mean, at some point of time, uh, probably and clearly, firm one decided to go with a low marginal cost or high marginal cost, right? And then later decided to compete with this uh, firm too. Well, but the thing is, we do not, again, we do not want to incorporate that choice of firm one uh, when it determined its type. So how can we model or how can we sort of incorporate that into the uh, game tree? Well, we can just say uh, nature determines the type of the uh, uh, firm one, all right? Well, why nature? Well, because as I said, I just want to focus on these two firms and only these two firms quantity choices, all right? So the type choices, is not part of this question. Maybe it is a part of another, a broader question, but not this one. So therefore, I just assign uh, some sort of hypothetical player, and I call it nature, and I am going to ignore that player from my analysis. So the nature determines the type of the firm one, we say. Um, as we said, it's either low marginal cost or high marginal cost. All right, and we, by the way, also assume that uh, those types are assumed to be, I mean, firm two believes that firm one has low marginal cost with some probability Q and high marginal cost 
with some probability one minus q. All right, so we assume that firm two has this explicit belief, and we assume that both firm one and obviously firm two knows about this belief. All right, so you may want to put those beliefs here as well. It's like, what is the likelihood that one type is going to occur? I mean, this is not really a, a sort of a, a subjective belief. It is quite objective because these are the belief of firm two. But then you may ask, so like, well, how come firm one knows about this belief then? Well, these are all simplification assumptions, all right? So trust me, uh, otherwise, uh, things are going to get very, very messy. So let's ignore all that and assume that th those beliefs are sort of commonly known. All right, well, then what? So here, firm one, so these are firm one's decision note. Firm one observes the nature's uh, choice, okay? Once again, I kind of treat nature as a player, but when I analyze this game, I will actually ignore the nature because it's not really the player in my strategic environment, all right? Why? Well, as I said, I do not want to analyze why and when firm one decides to choose low or high marginal cost, all right? So that's not part of my question. Sorry. So firm one chooses its quantity. There are two options for firm one. All right, um, so it's either Q1 equals four unit or Q1 equals eight unit, all right? Q1 equals four, Q1 equals eight. Well, whether firm one is a low type or high type, right? Those choices are there, we assume. I mean, according to this question, the description, uh, high type cost, uh, a high cost firm, for example, doesn't have different uh, strategy choices. If, if, if it had, well, then I would definitely, you know, uh, incorporate them here as, as, as strategies. All right. Well, then next, firm two observes firm one's quantity, but only quantity. All right. So here is the main uh, kind of uh, uh, a new thing in these games. Uh, this is an incomplete information game. So some information is unknown, uh, known to only one player, but unknown to other players. So here, this information is the uh, marginal cost of firm one. Is it high or low? This is only known by firm one. So how am I going to uh, sort of incorporate this on the game tree? I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It's like, once again, firm two can observe the quantity choice of firm one. However, firm two cannot observe the true type of firm one, all right? So how am I gonna inter incorporate this? Well, so if firm two can distinguish or observe the quantity of firm one, that means whenever firm one chooses quantity equals four, firm two is going to see that. But what firm two cannot distinguish is whether this choice is coming from the low uh, cost firm or from high cost uh, firm. So therefore, these two decision nodes must be in the same information set for firm two. All right, um, so here I have firm two's choices. It's Q2 equals four, Q2 equals eight, and Q2 equals four, Q2 equals eight. Well, what about firm one? chooses eight units of quantity, right? Firm one, I mean low or the high cost firm one. Well, in this case, once again, the four is different than eight. So firm two can distinguish that firm one has actually chosen a different quantity, different than four. Uh, four. But the thing is, uh, it's this eight units of output. Is it coming from the low marginal cost firm or high marginal cost firm? That is uh, sort of the piece of information firm two cannot really pin down. So how am I going to do that? Well, similarly, this decision note and this decision note must be in the same info set. Well, in order to uh, sort of get rid of this uh, overlapping information sets, let me just sort of extend this branch. Okay, I'm sorry for uh, double branches here. So let me uh, make it nicer, and this one as well. So this is a longer than uh, the other one, again, so that the information sets do not overlap. 
there is no other reason. And so this note and this note must be the same info set for firm two. And firm two again chooses either four units of quantity or eight units of quantity. Okay. And then the game is over. Then the payoffs. Uh, well, um, I'm not going to, but well, just for the sake of completeness, let me uh, sort of uh, uh, made up some payoffs here. So five, five, let's suppose, um, and six, um, I, I don't know why this is six. Let me make it consistent at least. Three, seven, so here I'm going to have like three, uh, three, uh, five, and then, oh, oh, two, five, I'm sorry. And then I have here uh, a one, uh, six, um, and then here I will have uh, seven, seven. Here I'm going to have, uh, again, I'm just making up the numbers, all right? They do not really have to be consistent with the uh, uh, story. Um, so just to show the complete picture. So this is what the game tree is going to look like in this game. Okay. Well, um, so one question I would like to ask is, uh, what would be the game tree if, for example, the asymmetric information was two sided, meaning both firm one and firm two's marginal costs are not commonly known or publicly known, but they are privately known, meaning firm two could also have low marginal cost, high marginal cost. Well, then the game tree would be definitely more complicated than this, and I am not going to draw it. Uh, but the thing is, well, then the nature does not, does not only determine firm one's type, but also firm two's type, all right? So the firm has some sort of uh, acting uh, or, or choosing sort of an action uh, in, in two places in this game. And so the game tree would be more, uh, look more complicated. And this is exactly why I picked this example so that the game tree is, is, is easier to draw. Uh, but the thing is, normally and usually we do not really draw the game tree for incomplete information games, extensive form incomplete information games, because they are not easy to draw. Uh, but nevertheless, I wanted to give you some simple game tree so that you can relate uh, some new concepts that I'm going to introduce uh, with the old concepts that we already learned in our uh, previous uh, lectures.